All right, so by way of introduction and, and in, introduce um, the open portion of our meeting. So there's been a lot of interest coming from the community, um, different member institutions regarding progress on my plan. And so when I Darcy had approached me about doing some sort of community forum, and it felt like doing it in conjunction with the functional council seemed like a, like a good idea. Um, so we could actually get a, an update and a demo of where my plan is and it would give you a chance to um, invite people from your campus who are interested. And I see Berkeley's got a room full, and I know, you know we've got a couple additional people at IU, so that's great. Um, figured just logistically it would be easier to have people come into the functional council meeting than to try to arrange something completely separate. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jill uh, Yetman, who is the delivery lead for my plan. Um, I guess I should just say one word. As you all are, are, are probably pretty clear, uh, Academic planning has always been within the vision, a pretty strong component of the vision of quality student. But as you know, our, our uh, delivery strategy, which is an E1 to really focus on the basics uh, and then worry, you know, <laughs> deliver vision, visionary functionality later. The, the upshot of that is that we really scope down what any kind of functionality we plan to deliver around academic planning um, in enrollment one. So this is a really nice complement um, and hopefully gap the functionality that we had originally envisioned in my plan. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jill. Great. Thank you. Uh, so I think the first thing that I wanted to just mention is kind of an idea of why my plan. And I think Carol said really the first big piece that this was um, functionality that came analysis from the quality student group and was something that they saw they weren't able to do right away. But yet, the University of Washington really saw the need for it. And as we shift our strategy uh, to more and more, um, you know, where we're trying to entice uh, a competitive base that's out of state or international and so on, that the, the strategy is to be more competitive. Um, and one of those pieces that's really critical is having solid infrastructure and services that um, meet students' needs. So it's definitely a, an approach of, you know, serving students and, and providing them um, a better quality experience. Um, but just excited about this and the fact that, uh, you know, the amount, the kind of data that we'd be able to pull about students' interests and the ability to respond to them. And then also providing students a tool to have more clarity about whether or not they were on track to graduate in a time frame that they would like to. So there's all kinds of pieces that came together. And I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but um, actually, uh, so my boss, Darcy, went to our student technology fee committee, and that's what the UW percentage of, of money that the students contribute. And typically that's used for actual hardware infrastructure, you know, general computers and so on. And they actually funded, I believe this was the first software project to be funded from that group, um, funded a good portion of this project. Um, Kind of makes it really exciting. We've got students on the team. We're developing something for students, uh, and it's being funded by students, which um, I think is a little bit uh, can be somewhat rare, at least at the University of Washington. Um, so, as we think about the students and, and their needs, um, the first slide I wanted to look at was just kind of we we developed four personas as we started to develop my plan. And you've got two of the folks here. Susie on the left is a sophomore, and Frank on the right is a freshman. And they're thinking about, um, you know, these bubbles are essentially as though my plan has been released, and how is their life better? Um, Susie's a, a hyper planner, and she really likes the fact that she's able to just create this plan online, do it once, talk with her advisor about it, and not spend a lot of time with either an Excel spreadsheet or, and, and so on. And then Frank is a little bit lost. He's a freshman. He's got a lot of pressure from his parents to do kind of a business degree, and he knows he doesn't want to do a business degree. And so we're kind of seeing him in that tread water. And so just what are some courses I need to take right now to prevent myself from getting off track? Um, but there's a lot more scenarios. And I just like to think about the software in terms of the behavior we're trying to improve or change. Um, and so. My plan, really for this first year, there's, so, there's, there's a great deal of foundational work that's being done on uh, tying together services, and we're 
obviously the first, uh, or we're really not the first, I guess, but pushing KRAD uh, pretty far right now. Maybe we are the first. Uh, but there's quite a few pieces that we're pulling together. And so we're doing this foundational pass across functionality. Um, and, but some of the excitement really comes into thinking about what is my plan going to be doing beyond year one. Um, and so this, is just, this slide is just really kind of highlighting some of those pieces. Um, you know, for year one, we're going to be looking to sharing that plan with advisors and having commenting and really the most basic functionality be ready. But um, we're pretty sure there's enhanced collaboration, the ability to approve a plan, um, to, to lock in a plan, and then do um, demand-based scheduling. There's been all kinds of ideas there. Um, and just because I'm mentioning these, these are kind of brainstorm ideas. These aren't things that have been committed to. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that in more detail a little bit later on what we're proposing and planning on doing. Um, but then the, the idea of actually finding courses by when they're available and getting into more section planning uh, information and then that leading into the idea of a registration cart uh, there's an obvious kind of flow of activity from that. I'm trying to figure out which program I want to be in, which courses get me there, when can I actually take those courses, and then now I want to register. Uh, so we're seeing my plan as kind of the beginning of that cycle. Um, enhanced tracking, um, enhanced progress tracking. Uh, we're not sure exactly what that would look like, but for year one, we're thinking about, you know, if, if an advisor goes in and comments on your to get an email. That, that would be kind of our baseline of, of alerts. Uh, but we're thinking that there might be additional alerts. Um, we're even hoping in year one to have it set so when the time schedule is published, if there was a course that's been on your saved list or you've kind of been tracking that course, whether it's on your plan or not, that you then get a notification saying, hey, you know, uh, for spring 2012, you've now got these courses of interest available. You might want to add them to your plan. Um, and then finally, processes related to academic planning. Um, and I think that again gets back to different advisor functions and um, we were just talking to the graduate school about their process with actually uh, doing an audit at the time of a degree request and what that might be. Quite a few advisors have shown a lot of interest in getting the data that's coming out and, and being able to track how many students change their degree over time or um, how many graduate students are looking for courses outside of their area of interest and you know, how do we promote more interdisciplinary or how do we make sure that we're uh, funding the departments where there's the most interest and so on. I just want to stop for a second. Are there any questions so far? Okay. So this is just a, a little slide. I think uh, your group knows more about these uh, kind of capabilities than I do, but my understanding is that we've inherited my plan based on analysis that came from the areas of managing the curriculum, um, enrollment, and then advising. And we're really just kind of spanning the three of those. Carol, is there anything you'd want to add to that that would help? Or I kind of feel like I'm preaching to the choir with this one. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the functional council at least has seen Okay. Presentations on what my plan is, but uh, you know, a lot of the traditional audience probably not. But it, it's very akin to what we have been calling learning plan all these years. So all the requirements around quote unquote learning plan, it's very analogous to that. Although I think um, you know, there's some places where there's differences and you know, slightly different scope, but broadly it's the same type of functionality that we had envisioned. So hopefully it's very familiar to. Great. Okay. Um, this one I'm actually going to skip. And then this is just a, an idea of what we're getting to with a one-year approach. Um, and we are including undergraduate and graduate students. Um, and we're really starting with being able to find courses uh, and programs. We found that the current search tools at the University of Washington were uh, problematic. And so just getting a course to then add to your plan was a significant improvement for that. And so that's some functionality I'll be, I can demo uh, today, what we have in development. Uh, and then from there, managing your plan, and that's where we consider where you're adding uh, courses to a plan. And this is at the course level, not at a, a section uh, schedule builder kind of a, a level. 
So with managing your plan, you add a course to a, a quarter, and then you would get some feedback about did you do you have the correct prerequisites, or more importantly, if you don't have the correct prerequisites or co-requisites, that it gives you an alert. Uh, that you can run an audit to see where you are, or am I on track, and that audit uh, would be the idea is to provide integrated functionality with the audit, so the audit essentially becomes a find relevant course tool by here are the requirements that I haven't fulfilled yet and what are some courses that are recommended or just general courses that meet those requirements um, so that you can put together a package that's based on what degree program you're pursuing. And then finally, share with an advisor and just making the plans accessible to advisors. And something critical we've heard there is we'd, they really like to be able to see the plan as a student would see it. So we won't recreate that interface, um, but really just expose that to advisors. Um, but some things that are out of scope, uh, we aren't targeting parents. Um, prospective students are going to end up being targeted because it's just so easy to do and that you know there will be functionality like find courses or find programs that by just making those services unauthenticated it'll serve both prospective students and students who haven't chosen to, to authenticate yet and I think the golden scenario I think of is a current student types in chem 242 UW and one of the first pages they see in their results from Google would be the course details page that's being driven by the My Plan uh, application, they just see it as a course page. And from there, they've got the ability to log into My Plan and add it to their plan if they want. You know, do you want to save and track this? Okay, go ahead and log in. But that experience would be useful for both prospective and uh, existing students. Um, and then native mobile app, we're certainly hoping some, some magic can happen from the quality mobility but we aren't going to be going out of our way this year to make a specific mobile app. Uh, exploration of self or the learning profile. So anything about, you know, um, here's who I am, here's who I want to be, uh, that sort of an exploration won't be included in, in year one. And then section level planning registration card, kind of mentioned those already. Um, so we are building this within the Kuali student framework. Um, along the way, any decisions that are local specific, we're documenting. There's really only been one or two so far that are pretty, pretty small, but I bring that up because I think it's going to transfer or translate into our conversation a little bit later about contribution approach and, and when that would be available and how will we support that. 